Analog value is continuous, not discrete, as shown in the analog and continuous values graph. In the previous units of instruction, techniques were discussed for designing logical control systems that had inputs and outputs that could only be on or off. These systems are less common than the logical control systems, but they are very important. In this unit, we'll examine analog inputs and outputs and their use in continuous control systems. Typical analog inputs and outputs for PLCs are to input an analog voltage into a PLC. The continuous voltage value must be sampled and then converted to a numerical value by an AD converter. The graph shown on this screen shows a continuous voltage changing over time. There are three samples shown on the graph. The process of sampling the data is not instantaneous, so each sample has a start and a stop time. The time required to acquire the sample is called the sampling time. AD converters can only acquire a limited number of samples per second. The time between samples is called the sampling period, T. And the inverse of the sampling period is the sampling frequency, also called the sampling rate. The sampling time is more often much smaller than the sampling period. The sampling frequency is specified when buying hardware, but for a typical PLC, a maximum sampling rate might be 20 Hz. A more realistic drawing of sampled data is shown here. The parameters defined on the previous screen can be used to calculate values for the AD converters. If the voltage being sampled changes too fast, false readings may occur. This device is an 8-bit AD converter. The SCL, or scale instruction, is used to scale data from an analog module and bring it into the limits prescribed by the process variable. This process variable may be either an arbitrary number or engineering units, such as pounds per square inch, degrees Celsius, ounces, etc. When run conditions are true, this instruction multiplies the source by a specified rate. The rounded result is added to an offset value and placed in the destination. The equations used in calculating the linear relationship between the input and the scaled output are Scaled value equals input value times rate plus offset. Rate equals the scale SCP maximum. or scale with parameters instruction is an output instruction that contains six parameters. These parameters may be integer, floating point, or immediate data values or constants. The SCP instruction is only available in SLC 5-03 processors and above, as well as Micrologic's 1200 and 1500 processors. All of the calculations needed for the SCL instructions are done by the processor when using the SCP instruction. The parameters needed by the SCP instruction are below. Input, the value to be scaled. This may be a word address or an address of floating point data elements. Input min, the minimum value for the input, low end of range. Input max, the maximum value for the input, high end of range. Scaled min, the minimum scaling value representing the low end of the scaled range of the input. The scaling relationship is linear. Scaled max. The maximum scaling value representing the high end of the scaled range of the input. The scaling relationship is linear. Output. The address for the scaled value that is returned after the instruction is executed. If any floating point file types or floating point constants are encountered in any of the previously described parameters, the entire instruction is treated as floating point and all immediate integer values are converted to immediate floating point data the values. of the SCP instruction here is exactly the same as described previously. The exception being that the output word that is specified is an analog output address rather than an integer word address. Again, it's important to note that all of the calculations are done behind the scenes by the processor.